keep this last question because I told you I wasn't going to keep you long, but I do, I do love the zombie. I just want to, you know, really thank you for this work because, uh, like I was saying, as I was reading all of the, the information that the Caucasians and, you know, the feminists had, I had to take time myself to pick this stuff out and to link it back to us. And your book, I just, I, I'm just forever humble. My daughters are forever humbled. I wonder, I, I wonder often, you know, who we are at this time for us to even come into the knowledge of who we are in her story, in her story, because it is completely left out of Western thought. It is left out of the so-called African conscious thought. And for me to even think about wanting to connect there and then to come across your book, which is a her story book. And I met another sister, uh, Sister Nubia, who is an anthropologist that she's left and she, you know, in the Sudan now helping dig that stuff up to, you know, bring our story, her story back. I'm just forever humbled. And I, I, I thank the great mother, you know, continually every day. I have a um, co-host. I, I think she's on the phone. I'm not sure she's here. Are you here, sis? Yes, ma'am. Okay. She, we talk about your book all the time. <laughs> oh, and, and I'll let her speak to you because I'm pretty sure she wants to say thank you. And then my last question would be for you to give some words of encouragement to the sisters who, you know, us who are the descendants of these siblings, to, you know, open ourselves up to this stuff. Think another way. Research yourself and have courage because, like I said, I was attacked. But I'll let, um, sister, her name is Shoplet, I'll let her talk to you because we talk about your book all the time. Yes, Mama Zobe, first of all, I want to say thank you, and it's a great honor to be on the line with you and have you share this information with us. I'm so floored right now, I just can't believe I had to put my phone on mute because I did not want to disturb anything that you had to say. I was just in school right now absorbing all the information. And a lot of things that you've said just make so much sense. It just seems so natural. It just, you know, it makes, it just all clicks. If, if everything clicks when you put it, when you start putting it into its proper perspective, you can see how it all originated with us. You can see how it all originated with her. And you can see how everything is still in place. It's just the characters have been changed. Exactly. And, and it's going to reach a dark conclusion as well. Uh, but uh, we need to understand that those prophecies were not just aimed at our invaders. They were aimed at us. Because her her removal from the temple started internally. When we get to a stage where we're no longer just reclaiming, oh yes, well uh, ISIS was black. We know now that the bust of Nefertiti was a fake. He knew that uh, that she looked like us instead of this image that they have here. But when we get from that stage and start investigating, which is something that has never been written, the internal politics of what happened that weakened our foundation all across the ancient world that caused us to, to, to be vulnerable to our enemies. We need to explore that and not look at this thing in terms of masculine, uh, uh, it's the black man's fault or it's the black woman's fault. Because uh, just as much as our mothers were divine goddesses, they were also the, the dark side. They were also witches very, very dark ones that used magic and sorcery. They were black male sorcerers. Uh, the, the Battle of the Titans, you hear that a lot, and you read a lot in Greek history. This was a war between uh, the, mas the black male uh, thunder priest's gods and the divine goddess's gods. That's the level we took this. That was not Greek mythology. The Greeks, first of all, didn't have a clue what any of that meant. But we uh, don't understand that the gods walked the earth with us. And they put their divine knowledge and power in the hands of our ancient mothers and fathers in those priesthoods. It is not in the history books where, uh, or uh, the on the military field where the war took place, it was in the temples. And this is why it's so important, even today, what is happening in Haiti with these Christians over there, that they continue the tradition of destroying those temples. Because they are still concerned that the divine is going to rise from them. 
history, you have to study these temples. Why were they so important for the invaders to see? If their religions were so superior prior to them coming in, why did they need ours? What was in them? And how were they able to get to them? So the corruption began there. Now, as far as uh, 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 black women are concerned, uh, no one needs to tell you who you are. You know. You just don't know the road to get to validating who you are. And the validation is not an intellectual one. It's spiritual. And not of your own choosing, but of, of the laws and traditions and the sacred rights that your ancient mother laid down that are still here in these traditions that most tend to shun. And there is no other road. I'm going to tell you that now, mark my words. There is no other road. If our mothers and fathers died here before they would give up their spirits, that tells you what, that, what they meant, what they were really all about. And they fought to save our religions here. They fought and died. So black women, you know who you are. But uh, many of them have misaligned themselves into paths that have nothing to do with them and that your mothers and the spirits that your mother bequeathed to you will not validate. You cannot make it up as you go along like the Western feminists do. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't feel it and invent it. They are divine laws. And, you need to, and that is what you need to link back up with. You just sit and watch how this whole drama, global drama, plays out. It can only implode on itself. Until she is restored, your strength, your aggressiveness, uh, what they call aggressiveness, uh, your sense of self, uh, any other woman would have never made it through what you went through. Uh, uh, your sense of self and what a lot of Black men, unfortunately, find as a fault uh, without understanding. And because, it's because of this lack of understanding of who you were and who you are and the yoke from which he and you were nurtured. You were never meant to be a Miss uh, Chrissy, whatever that is. <laughs> you were a warrior. That's how your mother started out. She started out as a warrior. Right. You can't tame... The, 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 the wild beast of the forest or nature sitting back grooming your nails. You had to know the powers of those animals just as you did the, 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 the spirits all around them. You had to know how to survive because you were the perpetuation of the human race. That's right. Queen Mother, may I ask you one thing? You, you, you mentioned about restoring her. Mm -hmm. uh, now, for us, as her daughters, the, all, I, you know, I don't know. All that's within me, you know, that I, that I have inside me, I was taught that I need to do the opposite. Um, because it's natural to me. All these things you're saying fall under the category of me. Uh, I know I'm a warrior. And I know I have an assertiveness. And I know I have a, a spirit, a fighting spirit that doesn't quit. Now, um, to return and restore the ways of the great mother. Is this, is this something that we already know? Or is this some sort of initiation process that we need to go through? To come back to, to your traditions, and uh, keep in mind now, uh, the sacred knowledge uh, during our mother's time, it was not meant for everybody. Right. Uh, we're in what we call a so-called democracy where information, the sacred and the profane, are blended and everybody feels entitled to have and to know. Uh, but even if your ears touched it, you would not know it. Heard it, you would not hear it if it wasn't meant for you. So we have to get away from that notion that uh, we're, we are entitled. You start where you are, come back to, to your own home tradition, religion, you know, the real ones, you know, you have a lot of stuff out here. You may end up going through a lot of things before you find your real home. Your ancestors will lead you. And
and you're not disconnected from them. This is another lie they told you. Why? Because that first ancestor of yours that was brought over here uh, and enslaved uh, is now with those who are African. They know who their mother and father was when they come over here. When they die, that's who they go back to. Right. And they're back with them, and they're all connected with you. So they're all together fighting for you. Fighting for you to find your way back home to them. Because it's passed down ancestrally. Right. And whatever your answer, that's the first thing you need to get. When you raise your child, uh, your child don't go to the neighbor no matter what condition the neighbor got, you can live in a shack, the, child, the neighbor can live in a palace. But your child don't go to the neighbor and expect uh, to get the secrets of her family from her neighbor. Right. No matter what condition the neighbor got, you can live in a shack, the, child, the neighbor can live in a palace. Right. But your child don't go to the neighbor and expect uh, to get the secrets of her family from her neighbor. She gets them from her home, be it a shack or be it a palace. You have to start with home because that's where you get it. Whatever is meant for you, you have to get it first from home. And in, in, in this case, we're speaking of your spiritual home. So you find, you join, connect first back with your ancestors. We have a tradition called the Mama Chumba. The Mama Chamba dates all the way back. It's over 2,000 years old. Uh, when the temple of Awusa in uh, Mecca, Islam, was destroyed. Uh, and they were forced. They were either slaughtered or many of them were forced. Because these were all, this was a, uh, many, many African tribes, uh, groups. It wasn't just one group. Uh, and now most of them are West. In the Buddha religion, there's the Mama Chamba. Goes all the way back to Islam, ancient Islam. These ancestors, and they are the ancestors of the children. They're the first group of the ancestors of the children who take in those who have been enslaved. See, there's an order in the divine universe, and so if your ancestors were enslaved, they are subsumed back into the Mama Chamba. When you have the Mama Chamba ceremony, then your ancestors from the Mama Chamba come with you. And you, they are enshrined with you. And so it's a process. So we have to learn uh, the uh, cosmology, the esoteric nature. We have to understand that knowledge that we lost on how things work. It's not just any old kind of way. Right. Mama Chamba can be learned uh, a, a, a different, a name different in all the, the traditions that we have. But in our, the name is Mama Chamba, but the, the divine concept is the same. For the diaspora is Mama Chamba. Many of you came over here already Mama Chamba. Why? Because your ancestors, your DNA and your blood didn't start when the Europeans came and got you from West Africa. Right. It began all the way to the east. Whose ancestors are still with you? They're still with you. And so uh, you have many Africans here, many, 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 who are Mama Chumba already before they got here. So it's, it's that knowledge that you need. You don't need to invent like the Western woman does, some theology and some rituals, you know, from a book. Uh, to, to connect with the Divine Mother, whatever that means to them. What you need is to connect, the, and don't forget, and see, we think of ancestors, we think about, well, I didn't know my father, he was no good. I didn't know my mother, uh, she, she didn't treat me right, whatever. See, we tend to think of the immediate ones. Uh -huh. If that there's a whole slew that comes before them and they were nothing like them. Right. Okay. And you got to look at the circumstances that made those immediate ones who they were. Where they weren't emotionally and spiritually accessible to you like they should have been. They got the account too. <laughs> right. Okay, because those are their mothers and fathers. They got an answer for that. 
So you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Most of us don't like to think of, of, of our, our family, you know, because we've been hurt or whatever by the immediate. But those are not who you think about. You think about all those ancient ones who are with you, who got them in check. We're rooted like that, divinely. There, there is no other roads. There is no other roads. We didn't get here through no other roads, but through them. That's true. And we got to fix what was broken. And then we have to take the gifts, whatever they may be, divine or otherwise, take our marching orders and do our job. Mm. Yes. I want to thank you again, Mother, um, for, for taking your time out doing doing the interview. I, I truly think that this is a great honor, and I know the women that um, listen to 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 my interviews are, you know, just ecstatic. And especially when an elder mother speaks, I, I, it, it's just you know, there's no words when the crones speak. You just you know, you just listen. So I want to thank you, and I'm going to um, put up links to blue.com and if um, people, you know, in the search box put Mandy Watson, M-A-M-I W-A-T-A your book come up um, I'm also going to put up your website and I, the website is just loaded with information, um, it's mandywatson.com M-A-M-I-W-A-T-A and I just want to also thank you for putting up and showing us that awesome mega list of, of artists I, I, in all of my studies, I still, I, I hadn't even came across that picture. The African feature of Artemis, what you know, people call Diana, is undeniable. It is, and I'm glad that you put the picture up, and I'm glad you got the other pre-Grecian Afro Minoan picture up there, because another sister told me that, you know, the Minoan was Greek, but I'm glad you got this picture all up here on your front page as well. It's been an uh, academic battle uh, from the start because uh, there's a popular book out there uh, on the so-called goddess, and it's, it's a pretty big book, and it's, it's uh, uh, you know, very Eurocentric, and I saw images of, Euro images of Artemis and Euro images of the Massene, and, and uh, as I dug deeper and dug deeper, and I had to, uh, it was very costly research because I had to get information from all over the world. Uh, even that image you have there came directly from Greece. Uh, uh, because I was determined, I knew uh, that this was, they were showing, I knew that was not true. Uh, but be that as it may, what I did uncover was that uh, during that time when they were taking our history, uh, they would deliberately uh, create uh, fraudulent images. This has been pervasive throughout, and, and make them European like to give uh, the Western woman uh, a presence in ancient history when she didn't have one. And so, when you study these, uh, and I found it, and and uh, we and they were uh, just like just recently, Nefertiti. They finally admitted that that bust uh, was a fraud. Mm -hmm. and so this is very, very well. I mean, it's it's done even now. We're watching it, but we don't see it as, uh, as they subsume our culture and that those aspects that they like all of a sudden become very American. Those aspects that they don't like stays for the black community. Images and uh, dances and food and everything. And so this and is a consistent pattern for them all throughout history. And we have to take note of that. But I could not let them no longer get away with that. Uh, I've been in academia. Uh, I worked in the universities. Uh, and it was disheartening to see black, educated, intelligent, uh, professors, female, uh, giving classes on feminism and didn't have a clue where they fit in. Wow. Oh, 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 oh man. And subsuming uh, this uh, very Eurocentric Western feminine theology when in reality he's not accepted in those movements. Not as an equal partner. 
And that's interesting you said that because we had a conversation out and some other sisters the other day on feminism. And um, it, it's interesting you say that because a lot of the black feminists are Christian. And I, for me, you know, because I, I'm, you know, more pagan, it, it, it's just amazing to me that even when I have conversations with them, I don't see how they are so-called pro-black, but they're still Christian. And then when I talk to the white feminists, they're talking about God is God is God is. Right, they're pagans, but uh, that's no different from uh, the Eurocentric male scholars. Uh, most of them uh, don't practice an African traditional religion either. They stay Christian, or they stay with the white Arab Muslim. Islam. Wow. And so... Uh, we, we, we are, our heads are filled with a lot of uh, archaeological history, uh, but we're still disconnected from our ancestors and our spirits. 